Well, you had, you had weird holidays, huh? What's that? I mean, your holidays were a little sad with, with your friend, huh? Well, that didn't happen until after New Year's, but um, yeah, that was just last week. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's holidays true. were were fine. They were, I think, more sedate than usual. Well, first of all, we stayed in town the whole time, but uh, also, um, you know, we get together with Stump's extended family on Christmas Eve, and uh, at other points around the holidays, and. Um, uh, you know, a good chunk of them did not make it into town because of the either the weather, the weather or the Southwest Airlines situation. So oh, right. oh. Um, this whole Arizona clan got canceled because of the weather and then rescheduled for the next week and got canceled because of the Southwest situation. So uh, they finally gave up. <laughs> Wow. So I'm actually speaking to you from my new office. Hey. <laughs> my, my desk is no longer where the piano will eventually go once I get one. <laughs> yeah, once you get another one. Once I get another one. Yeah. Once I get once I replace the one I couldn't get in, get it that wouldn't fit in the elevator <laughs> to get up here. And I was not going to pay. Well. I was not going to pay thousands of, I, I probably should have, the piano was probably worth it, but I just was not going to pay thousands of dollars to have a crane come and, and bring it up. There's actually the building next door, um, a unit came up for sale, clearly an estate sale, and um, um, the, the pictures in the MLS show, you know, that the unit is vacant, except there's a grand piano in, in the living room. Mm. And uh, I emailed the agent. I'm like, would the family by any chance be interested in getting rid of that piano? And uh, she's like, yeah, they'd really love to get rid of it. She said, but it will take a crane to get it out of the unit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, OK, well, that's exactly the problem that, you know, apparently they used a crane to get it into the unit. So. Yeah, yeah. But what floor is it on? I the twenty third or something like that. That the building East Point has forty two floors, so, um, so they can they can crane them up that high, I guess, huh? I I yeah, I don't know if it's kind of like what they do with the window washers, where they put something up on the roof and and do it that way. I mean, I I, I have no idea. I'm mm. sure I'm sure the people that do it know how to do it, but yeah, they I, they must put something up on the roof. I'm sure it's quite quite an issue because of course you've got to get permission from uh you know from the management company to to and get it all arranged and the logistics worked out and I'm, I'm sure it's thousands of dollars to get it done but you know a really good grand piano it's totally worth it you know but <laughs> um but uh I, I wasn't i wasn't there yet and anyway um I was happy to have our music director have the piano. She's our assistant music director. And, you know, she's just getting started in her career and she would never be able to afford a piano like that. Um, mm -hmm. So I was happy to have to, to let it go to somebody who um, would use it, and, it. And, and, and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So. so what size can you get in there without craning it? Do you know? uh well i think bob knows we wrote it down <laughs> it needs to be about maybe six inches shorter than it was um, they come they come in i mean they're they're you know there's kind of in a, in a general i think we've had this conversation actually uh in a general way there's kind of the not in public <laughs> what's that but not in public no, I thought we talked about it recently, but um, like six months ago. Um, On the call? Yeah, I thought so. No, I don't think so. Nobody listens to us anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but I mean, there's there's like the there's like um, the kind of the mini grands, which are kind of comparable to um, you have you have the spin, you know, an upright. You have like a spin it, and then you have the full. The full upright, which which basically is a, the the strings are the same length as in a in a grand piano, but instead of being horizontal, they're vertical. Um, 
but the spinets have short strings and they have kind of a tinny sound. So a short, you can get a short grand piano, um, uh, but the studio grand was what I had and they tend to be about six feet or so. I mean, it's not a standard, it's not like kitchen cabinets or kitchen appliances that are a standard width or a standard depth or something. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they all kind of come it's in different. not that big though. What's that? Six feet doesn't seem that big. Well, the problem was, is, you know, you can't bend a piano and then they couldn't get it. The hallway was too narrow. They couldn't turn it to get it into the elevator. I mean, it would have fit in the elevator, but they couldn't turn oh, it down the narrow yes. hallway to get it into the elevator. So it's not the length that's the width because they could put it upright because I'm six feet tall. I mean, I can walk out of an elevator and into a hallway, but I guess if I was yeah, I guess so. I mean, we had a hell of a time when we lived, when we moved out in and when we moved it in and out of Virginia. I mean, it was it. I mean, it just made it. So, yeah, I think it's probably the key, the width of the keyboard, I guess. I don't I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's a width combined with the length, you know. And uh, I mean, they the guys did it. We had actually had to I don't. I think they took out a rail but i mean it it was dicey but they they managed to get it in and out but with the elevator the hallway into the elevator they they couldn't make the they couldn't make the turn to get it into the elevator huh. anyway so but uh anyway whatever so How were your holidays well we spent the holidays moving <laughs> moving my desk into the TV room and the TV out into the living room and uh, uh rearranging rearranging yeah rearranging and uh and 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 so all of these books that you see behind me were in the living room and they've all moved into here and uh and all of our vinyl we have a quite quite a large vinyl collection of records and uh that's all out in the living room now where where our stereo actually is and where our stereo has been since day one so it's nice to have it all together actually and one of the things we've taken to doing because uh, we're not very we're not very dedicated tv watchers so if we can't find a movie or something pretty quickly um that with that, <laughs> that yeah we give up and we've been listening to to the radio and and listening to records out in the living room it's really nice we're really enjoying it <laughs> the funny thing is i That's think really if you can't find something you'll pull out your mouth harp and start going yeah no <laughs> so it's it's kind Pop of out his now that we've moved the tv out to the living room i think we're actually watching less tv because of that because we're anyway but yeah i was picturing bob pulling out his jugs and you pulling out a mouth harp and you oh, guys you go. and in fact uh it used cool. to be um kind of a, a ritual with me on saturday nights um i had always listened to the midnight special on wfmt which is like their folk music thing and um i i just got out of the habit of listening to it and, and probably haven't listened to it in years well this this year we we stayed home for new year's we didn't go out and do anything so midnight special always has a live um show in their studios it was actually at uh, the old town school of folk music this year but it's always a live show for new year's eve and uh and coincidentally new year's eve happened to be on saturday as well so the midnight special always comes on saturday and uh, this year it happened to be New Year's Eve. So, um, um, so, so we listened to the Midnight Special for the first time in, in years and really enjoyed it for New Year's Eve. It was our New Year's Eve party. <laughs> Did you play all your old favorites? No. <laughs> they played some, but um, uh, they had... Um, Tom Paxton, who's an old folk singer, you know, very big name in the 60s when the folk in the folk music revival scene. And he was on, he's in his, he's like 85 years old. And he was on singing. It was, 
I mean, you could tell that he hadn't, he had to kind of warm up a little more. <laughs> he wasn't quite warmed up, but as the evening progressed, it, it, uh, it, it, it improved, his voice improved, but uh, I didn't realize he was that old. I like, that's pretty, pretty impressive and phenomenal actually. So, hmm. yeah. That doesn't seem that old to you, does it? 85. <laughs> but just in this, under the circumstances. Well, I think it's old to be singing, right? I don't know. I mean, you know, your voice gets old as you get old. <laughs> or maybe that's just an expectation. Remember, we were, weren't we talking about expectations recently? Yeah, about about what people expect about getting old. Yeah. Yeah. Who was what? Who was that? Was that Ben Hardy? Was he the one talking about that? No. No, I think it was just us. Was it just us? I thought yeah. it was. I thought it was some speaker that we listened to that. that was no, I don't think so. I think it was the discussion about working with clients. You know that by the time they're in their fifties, they don't want to buy a place with stairs because they may not oh. be able to live there very long again. That kind of stuff. And, it was and you have that great story about a client of yours who bought a high rise. Yeah, like at 70 years old, yeah, moved into a thousand lakeshore drive and uh moved out to go to to move into the Claire at, at 95 and had you know a whole new life, had a whole new career and a whole new life in the city and a whole new group of friends and had 25 years, you know, in this condo, you know, at a place when most people would have been going the other way, you know um moving you know away from the city or moving into a nursing home or moving into you know somewhere where they could you know live out their days or whatever and he had like a whole other exciting life you know from 70 to 95 and now he's in the retirement high rise a few blocks away with all of his friends he made in the city you know that's great but, yeah it's just interesting the the different mindsets we come across uh -huh. Well, and and the, and that reminds me of 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 my client whose condo I sold last summer in Hyde Park, and she actually ended up buying the unit across the hall because she needed more space. I'm like, and she's in her nineties, and uh, I'm like, You're probably big too, right? Yeah, that's a um, yeah that was built as a co-op building and converted to condos maybe five ten years ago ten years ago maybe it was converted to condos so you know built in that kind of that roaring twenties era the Rudolph Valentino era I like to call it um, do they, you <laughs> they were what I said do you yeah <laughs> And, uh, and I prefer to think of it as Great Gatsby. I was going to say the great. I probably should be calling it the Great Gatsby era. Now, now that what's his name has come out with his movie, and everybody's seen it, and everybody knows who the Great Gatsby is. But you know, thirty years ago, nobody knew who the Great Gatsby was. <laughs> People that didn't read. <laughs> People who didn't read. Right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. So, uh, so she moved into the unit across the hall into a three bedroom. She had been in a two bedroom, but. Um, she used her, like me, she used her second bedroom as a TV room kind of den and uh, um, she needed it. She needed a bedroom for when people came to see her and visit her. So she'd have a place for them to stay. So, I just realized, I think you grew up near the Great Gatsby house. What's that? I think you grew up in Lake Forest near the Great Gatsby house. The actual one where he he actually lived and where or actually where she lived. Um, Zelda Fitzgerald. Yeah, where Zelda lived. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think they just recently resold the house. Yeah, where Zelda. I don't know lived. anything. I don't know anything. I didn't grow up. It there. was really based on his North Shore. I know that it was written in as New York, but it was based on he lived in New York in Chicago on the North Shore, and Zelda, like, was the wealthy woman who lived. You know. Huh. Yeah. and it was it that. was Daisy Zelda was actually Daisy yeah, yeah right I, I I don't know anything about that I guess we're gonna have to research you're gonna yeah. have to research sure it was Lake Forest yeah but I'm pretty sure it was Lake Forest where you grew up well, yeah well I 
I well so you went to school. I went I went to high school there. Yeah. yeah. I get. I guess it, it's 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 roots as much as any place for me. Yeah, I guess because right. <laughs> I'm a military brat. <laughs> but uh, um, um, huh? Okay, so you'll have to research this and report back next week what you what you learn. You give that as an assignment to to Mari. To Mari. Right, right. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to get a blind or something for my window in here. What do you think? The sun is starting to come in here. Yeah, it looks fine from here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, all right. So, what do we got going on this week? It seems like, <laughs> seems like the uh, the market. I don't know. I mean, I uh, I really took off. I have to say, I I was tired and um, I really kind of shut down for those ten days or so. And um, and uh, but it seems like a lot of. I mean, every and everybody kind of does. Well, I shouldn't say everybody, but most people are out of the market for the holidays and focused on family and holidays and um, yeah i still feel like i mean the market shifted some but i still feel like everybody's still kind of holding their breath waiting to see exactly what's happening because we're anticipating something but it hasn't really quite come to fruition yet you know i don't know i think maybe sellers i think buyers are are getting out there I mean, I had this little, uh, I think I mentioned to you this condo in Des Plaines, um, two bedroom, one bath for 157,000. And I, um, he had to, he had to do some staging and whatnot. And it wasn't really ready to come on to market until literally like a few days before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I'm like, well, I don't think there's a lot of point in putting it on the market. At right now I said why don't we wait till after New Year so I put it in the MLS on um, Tuesday and between uh, and then at, I asked some compass colleagues if they wanted to hold it open on Saturday and uh, um, somebody on Debbie Hess's team actually her name is Stephanie she um, is, is farming that area and lives nearby so she was very anxious to do an open house there and happy to do it and our first open house is on saturday well between the time that i put it in late tuesday afternoon in the mls and she held her open house on saturday we must have had like between 15 and 20 showings mm -hmm. and ended well, up a price point that's hard to find too what's that but it's a price point that's hard to find too. I guess so. Although I have a really adorable little condo over on uh, in Avondale at, uh, at the corner of Eddie and Lawndale, just south of, of Addison. It's like literally two blocks to the Blue Line station. And um, it's priced at 140. And I think I've had like three showings on it. Mm. I don't, I don't understand that. It's such mm. a great location and I don't understand, but um we need to do something on that 3705 Eddie. We need to sell 3705 Eddie. But, um, um, but no, I had like 15 and we ended up uh, with five offers that came in and we had asked, I asked for highest and best and um, presented offers to the seller Saturday night and, and he accepted one. So um, I, um, so at least at least that was busy, and I and I've had a couple of buyers that reached out to me last week too that are ready to get into the market that I'm starting to work with now. So, at least from my perspective, it seems like people are ready. And 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 I often find this to be true that after the holidays, people have been out of the market and they're ready to they come back in January, particularly when we have mild weather like we're having right now. Um, they come back in and they're ready to pay. Hey, this is the year we're gonna we're gonna buy our next home or buy a new home or or whatever. And I often have good January. So maybe like you were saying, maybe it's my expectation. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if uh, the market that everybody else is expecting comes to fruition or not. Right. Yeah. I don't know what people are expecting, but uh, uh, it seems like it seems like I mean, it's, I think it's a good market to be a buyer right now. Yeah, that's true. I think it's a good buyer's market and it's it's simmered down. Um, 
you know, things have simmered down and the interest rates have simmered down. They're, they're down around six and a quarter, six and a half right now, I think they're running. So, um, which isn't a bad rate at all. No, not at all. And the prices are, have moderated as well. So do you have this thing on your Zoom with, with like 20 different little app things on the right? What, what is that? Little icons, do you, are you seeing that? Nope. I wonder what that is all. I don't know. I keep getting these messages that I ignore. Was there error? <laughs> it's, all, it's all these little icon, little um, icons of, of different apps, but they keep sending me messages about it and I keep ignoring it. So maybe I'm going to have to actually see what it is. <laughs> all right. Well, you do that. <laughs> okay. And you, you're going to tell Mari to research uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald and uh, <laughs> we will report back next you're week. We're going to do that too. <laughs> okay. Have a good week, everybody. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.